Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Over in the Hexagon forum at Renderosity, a fellow wrote in that he wants a more in-depth tutorial for Hexagon's UV mapping features. And um, I think in many respects I have not presented the tutorials that I have created in a very basic manner. So I'm going to create a maybe one or two tutorials for Hexagon devoted solely towards UV mapping and do it in a very very basic f format presuming that the viewer knows nothing about UV mapping and that this is their first introduction to it. So that is what this tutorial is. It is UV mapping in its most basic form. So all I've done is created a cube and I created a copy of it for a later explanation in this tutorial. And in a 3D world that concerns modeling, you have three axes. You have your y-axis that goes up and down. You have your x-axis that goes left and right, back and forth. And you have your z-axis which goes towards you and away from you. And that is how you create objects in this 3D world space. Now, you rotate the object around, and those coordinates do change. But presuming that you don't move things around, this is how uh, objects are created, and this is how things are associated in a 3D world. You have to have uh, three D's or three dimensions, up and down, left and right, forward and back, and those are described as or referred to as X, Y, and Z coordinates. UV mapping uses two coordinates, a U and a V, and I will get on to those uh, a little bit later as we get into the UV mapping of this cube that I've created. Well, the objective of UV mapping is to allow the modeler to apply not just a texture, but a texture in a very specific manner and in a very specific position on the object that they have created. I could easily export this as a wavefront object imported into View or Bryce or any other uh, rendering program, slap on a, a rust material, a snow material, uh, any, any sort of material and render away. And that has nothing to do with UV coordinates. But UV coordinates are very specific in that they are devoted towards essentially texture painting where you create a, where you use a photograph an image of whatever manner and you apply it onto your UV map so that when you do render it the results are exactly what you want. So to start off very basically explaining how UV maps work I'm gonna hop on the internet and I'll be right back. Okay so on the internet I'm gonna bring up a perfect example of what UV mapping is and we've got a cube and we need to unwrap it so that we can apply a texture map to it and the process in which a object is UV mapped or unwrapped is exactly like the image here of this orange. So in hexagon we're going to take our cube and unwrap it essentially exactly like one unwraps a orange or any other piece of fruit. So I will show you a visual demonstration 
and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing as it applies to UV. So I've got these two sides selected. I'm going to disassociate, change my pivot point. Disassociate this one, change the pivot point here. Disassociate that, set my pivot point there. Okay, this is our cube that we have just unwrapped in the exact same manner as you would unwrap or unpeel an orange. And when we go into UV mapping and we, provide, we uh, select a cubic projection on our cube, it will unwrap it in a similar fashion as what I have done here. And the purpose of this is that if you have a cube and you want to paint on it, which we will do later in Photoshop, you want to be able to unwrap this whole thing and paint on it like you would if you were painting on a piece of paper. And the way you go about doing that is to unwrap it. So we will use this cube now. I will come over here to UV and paint and I will use a split screen here and I'm gonna apply a cubic projection to this. Now don't worry about the texture over here right now. What Hexagon has done and any other modeling program that allows you to um, operate with UV polygons is it has taken, let me validate this, it has taken this cube, broke it, broken all six, all six sides apart, and placed them right here. So if I select that one, you see it's selected over in their UV view. And all of them are just stacked one on top of another, you know, like a pile of napkins or something. I can select any one I want, and I can move it away. And so these are the six sides of our polygon. And that's just, and over here in the UV view, this is just one way of several others, one way in which hexagon unwraps the cube. I'm going to come back over here, and we are going to... apply another you, uh, projection to this. I'll apply cubic projection and now I'll select this one. Now this one here uh, on a surface looks like it only gives us three cubes but this particular button, it, we have all six cubes here but if I hover my cursor over it it puts only opposite facing cubes on top of one another. So, let me validate that. So, the top and the bottom are stacked one on top of one another. The left and the right are stacked one on, on, on top of another. And the front and the back the same. And that's just the way that Hexagon has decided to divide this cube to break it up and unwrap it and then to lay out the UV maps here. The next one is it takes all six sides and places each one in its own separate portion, its own separate space of the UV map. So if I validate this all six sides of the cube are represented here. Uh, not w none of them are, are overlapping another. They're all just butted up one against one another. So this is 
essentially what UV mapping is. Now I said that 3D modeling in 3D uses three coordinates X, Y, and Z. In UV mapping you have the U and the V. And the best way to understand this is V stands for vertical. That has to do with the coordinate going up and down and the U is back and forth. The reason for this is that in when you're modeling a three-dimensional object you have three axes X, Y, and Z. Up, down, left, and right, forward, and back. But when you're creating a texture just like a texture image that you would you know make with your camera that's a two-dimensional object and so two dimensions that's U and V, V for vertical and U for back and forth so that's what the U and the V for UV mapping is it is a reference to the two dimensions up and down left and right that have to do with your with the skin of your 3D object. So this is the UV map that Hexagon has created for our 3D object. I'm going to come down here to this camera here and I'm going to save this UV map. I'll just call it that. Save it on my desktop. So over here in Photoshop what I'm going to do is there's the UV map from Hexagon. I'm just going to drag it right into Photoshop. And there's our UV map that Hexagon has created. Now the purpose of this is, as I said earlier, to allow me to very precisely place whatever texture I want onto our cube in Hexagon. So I'm going to create a new layer above this. I'm going to grab my paintbrush and making sure I have a hard edge brush. I'm going to place an orange dot here. Let's change my colors. I'll come up here to red. Place red there. And come over here to blue. Place blue there. Select a green color, yellow, and we need one more color. Here we are. We've got six dots for the six sides of our UV map. I'll create a layer below that, and I'll just fill that in with white. And I will save this right over, it was a PNG file, save it right over the one that we created in Hexagon. Now I'll come back to Hexagon and I will assign a texture to this. Come over here, let me move my shortcuts out of the way. Come over here to Texture and I want to apply a texture image to it. Come over here and choose that one that we just created. And there is the texture that we just created in Photoshop. Now we're missing one on this side so probably what we need to do is let's come over here to split screen and I will probably need to flip this vertically. or horizontally. There is the UV map and it should be a yellow Let's do, let's move it up here and see. Okay, there we are. 
Let me undo that. This needs to be flipped vertically. There we are. And we have all six sides. So this is the cube that I created. And, and this is how I wanted the cube to look when I finished texturing it. Well, the only way you can do that is to unfold it just like we did, create a UV map out of it, save it on your desktop, and then any and, and then in any competent painting program, paint over that UV map just like we did here, with whatever texture we whatever texture we want inside of each UV face or polygon. And then just save it out and apply it to your object. So the, ob the objective has been met based on what UV mapping does. And that is allowing you to very specifically prov uh, apply a texture or an image to an object in, in a very exact form, in a very exact uh, manner. And we will you go into another tutorial on applying different textures and how to manipulate hexagon, how to manipulate the UV maps to make texturing easier. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.